In our last video, we introduced digital audio and you know, various concepts such as sample rate and bit depth. One of the things, if we look at the history of digital audio, is that over time, you know, there's this interesting trend where we tend towards higher quality audio, and that's followed by other priorities such as portability or streamability, and this affects sort of audio quality and the way that that actually works. Absolutely, and you'd be surprised the different kinds of file formats you'd have on your computer from an MP3, WAV, WMA, AAC, etc. Yeah, and some of these formats, you know, it's interesting, they seem to be universal, while others either seem to, you know, work only on, you know, Windows or Apple computers or Linux. What's not necessarily obvious is there are two fundamental types of files that you'll find on your computer. One of it's uncompressed, which is what we use in the professional domain when we're recording, editing or working with digital audio. And the other is compressed, which is typically used when we want to transfer files or stream files. Yeah. So what do you think the differences are between compressed and uncompressed audio? Well, with compressed audio, you're reducing the file size by using psychoacoustic processes. So you're reducing the amount of space that's used, for example, on a storage medium such as a hard drive. Now that's for transferring it or streaming it across the internet. With an uncompressed file, you're really thinking about maintaining the full quality of the audio, so you're not losing any information. Now that actually takes up a lot more space, but it's better for you when you're actually working in a professional recording environment or uh, editing sound digitally. So the normal formats we'd see for uncompressed audio are things like WAV files that are made by Microsoft or you know, AFIS files which are made by Apple. And when we're thinking about creative projects in the course, these are the sorts of formats that we'd actually be looking to use for our creative work. So for example, when users are playing their sound back on the SoundCloud website, they'll be hearing an MP3 streaming out of the browser. But when they go to download the file or upload the file that they're working with, they'll be downloading a full quality sound file, uncompressed. Yeah, and that makes SoundCloud you know, a great tool for sort of online collaborative creative work and that's what we'll be using you know, in the course for our creative projects this week. Absolutely.